would like to introduce you to a young lady, Kavisha, who is from Rocha Club of Vatramulla, who will speak to you about the uh, what the young young ladies are going through. Over to you, Kavisha. Thank you, Governor. Uh, could you all hear me well? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So adding on to what uh, the governor also mentioned about um, because of the economic crisis that we're going through and inflation being skyrocketing, we have many low income families that are facing a lot of difficulty, even affording the basic necessities. And I'm referring to bread and egg, like basic, basic necessities. And the, usually in families, if the father was the only one who was the breadwinner, then now the mom is also going out to work because one income is not enough. It's not sufficient to live the, sustain, uh, live the standard of living that they were. So because of that, now that even moms have started going out to work, uh, there are a lot of kids that are left behind at home. And usually it's the girl child that is more often than not that's been told to take up the position of being the one at home to take care of the home and to make sure the siblings, like the governor said, are being taken care of. And that means they can't go to school and they're young kids, they're young girls, and you can't deprive them of the basic right to have education. So because of this issue, and, and even to add on to that, um, in Sri Lanka, at least from what I know, most of the women, um, they end up going abroad for work to countries like in the Middle East, um, because they offer better salaries. Not sure if you know, but in Sri Lanka, for every 100 rupees a man earns, a woman earns only 76 rupees. So that really shows why they're even looking to go ahead and move out of the country and work, find, seek for work in other countries. And in that process, the, when the mom leaves the home, the, the kids, the, especially even the girl children, they don't have the mom's love, the mom's affection, the care, which is really important during their early childhood development. So being deprived from something as crucial and basic as such, and even uh, uh, from education, they, even the girl child at home is now being forced to sort of take up work. And not just any work, but recently we've started hearing that in Sri Lanka, in certain areas, that girl children are actually going into prostitution because they have no other choice. They're really young and that it seems like one of the best avenues for them to go into, to bring in some income to the family. And another issue is that when the mom leaves the home, that leaves the girl child quite vulnerable to sexual harassment. And we would think that that comes from society, but actually not. It even comes from within the families from the brother to the father to the grandfather, the girls are not safe. And they don't know about it because they don't even know, they're so young that they don't even know what's right and wrong. Some of them, some of them don't even know what's right and wrong. So that's why I've seen a lot of um, organizations already in Sri Lanka that are uh, working on sexual harassment and prevention awareness because girls need to be taught about that and they need to be educated on that. And um, some established uh, organizations have also uh, created uh, what you, um, child friendly spaces. In the sense, in the rural area, in the, in the city, they've created a space where when the mom and dad goes to work, they can uh, go, go to the sort of the center where there'll be a teacher, there'll be food provided, and they get, they've been taken care of and they've been prevented from any sort of other sexual harassment or any other sort of harassment that they would have to face. So that being said, another issue is that even if these girls were able to go to school, in most rural areas, the schools here, they don't have proper washroom facilities. Meaning that, as we all know, every girl goes through one week of menstruation every single month. And during that menstruation period, you need absolute care. You need good sanitary wear and you need proper clean spaces to change and to carry on with your day. But imagine you're in a school where you don't even have a washroom or rather you share a washroom with many, many more people, uh, including even, the, even sharing a washroom with boys. It's very uncomfortable for girls to go to school and go about the day. And... Uh, most of these schools still don't even have washrooms, washroom facilities, such a basic facility. So that is an area which 
uh, even our club uh, is actually looking into, we have initiated a project called Our Period, where we have, it's an initiative to promote sustainable uh, sanitary napkins and also to help to raise funds to help build washrooms in rural area schools where they do not have access to such a basic necessity. So those are some of the, uh, to sort of summarize a few of the issues that the girl child has been going through uh, even from before the crisis time as well, but because of the crisis, it's been amplified more than ever. And um, just wanted to shine some light on what the girls in Sri Lanka are going through. And like the governor said, despite all of that, the, the road tree and road track were all striving and working towards helping these little girls as well. So Dr. Indira, thank you so much for inviting me. And it's been a pleasure to listen to all of y'all. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Kavisha.